Welcome back to our channel, everybody. I just got down to the Airstream. I was gonna start uh, taking the walls out on the inside, but it's spring here in Idaho, and this tree that the Airstream is parked under, you can see behind me, nice and pink and full bloom. And I'm just gonna, <laughs> I walked up to it and heard this, I thought there was a drone, but it was actually a, uh, it was actually coming from this tree. And I don't know if you can hear it. I'll be quiet for a second. This tree is actually full of bees right now, swarming and getting pollen from the flowers, which I thought was pretty cool because I was just watching videos about how bees make honey and how when they swarm, uh, they're actually really docile because they're so full of pollen and honey. <laughs> there goes one right in front of my face. Uh, but uh, it's still a little nerve wracking and still kind of gives you the chills, like a swarm of bees, you know, I don't know. It just, it feels, uh, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it, but you probably know what I'm talking about. Anyway, this is right outside of the Airstream and I'm glad we're gonna be working on the inside today. Speaking of that, let's get inside. We're gonna take the inner skins off. Are you ready, Parker? Oh yeah! What's up everybody? Welcome back to Chasing the Wild Wonder. I am here inside Serenity, the Airstream, and we are getting ready. Well, when I say we, I mean me, I'm all by myself. I'm getting ready to finally remove the interior skins. Now you can see above me, I've already taken the ceiling panel off um, and I've removed the fan things. I don't know what they're called. So I've got the first one off. This one was a bit tricky because it only had rivets, two rivets every crossbar. And then it was crimped in on the sides with this little rail that actually, um, that they actually riveted in first and then crimped that top panel on. Uh, it's a Hand nifty way of hiding rivets from the finish, but it's also a pain in the butt to get apart Honestly, I don't even know what machine they had to use to get that on there I don't care about seeing rivets, so I wouldn't go through the trouble of doing this I don't know if they do that anymore in the newer Airstreams, but this is an 80s model and that's how they did it in the 80s I guess so I've gone through and I have removed Mostly everything from the walls like the uh, plugs and switches and speakers and extra things like that to get them out of the way so that we can start removing the walls. Now, all the walls are riveted in with 1 8 inch pop rivets. So you'll want a 1 8 inch drill bit to get that out. And I just went out and I got a new set of titanium drill bits. These are made for drilling out metal. Um, and my other drill bits, they wore out pretty fast after the handful of rivets that we did like on the outside removing the trim and whatnot. So I thought I'd get a little bit better ones so that hopefully they last longer. Anyway, so I'm just gonna go through, I'm gonna start drilling out the rivets and removing each panel one at a time. Now, one thing that you wanna do is mark and label each panel so that you don't forget where it came from and it makes it a lot easier when you're gonna put it back in. So I started a little diagram and I'm numbering them and I'm gonna write the numbers on the panels themselves so I can refer to this when we go to put it back together and we'll know which panel goes where. Now even if you're not going to reuse these panels and perhaps you're gonna get new aluminum like we might, you'll still want to keep these panels. You might want to use them as templates for your holes and cutouts on the new sheets of aluminum that you get. So if we get new sheet of aluminum, say we're gonna overlay this on the top of the new panel and then draw out where we need to drill holes and what we need to cut uh, for the holes for like the windows and things like that. And that's gonna make it a lot easier instead of putting, trying to put a whole sheet of aluminum up on the wall, figure out where we need to cut. That's what we're gonna do. And it should be a fun process. We'll see.
guess it's dinner time. Ceiling piece, almost all the way off until I realized I forgot to take this uh, antenna piece off. We're gonna go eat dinner and resume afterwards. Look at where we're barbecuing some of Bellevue's best beef from uh, Silver Creek Ranch. We're having carne asadas tonight for whose birthday? Granny! Got the ceiling off. Found a rare mask. Can't find those in the wild. Well, it's dark. For now, I'm gonna clean up this mess and call it call it a night. Alright, not feeling very helpful this morning. I had to go through on the edge, help to get all the um, adhesive off where the vinyl was. It has been a process, you guys. I am like, this will be the day that I tackle it. But I went in to inside, um, cause I'm not gonna do a lot on the roof. Um, so currently went through and uh, had to spray all the rusty screw heads um, in hopes to be able to take off a lot of the window screens so that we can start taking the inside panels off in the air street. Where are we going? Going on the walk. Glitter glow like a disco. Look at that thing. Flimsy. Oh, look at that. I missed one. There we go. Yeah, what's making this hard is that the rivets are spinning, so the drill can't really, like, you know drill because I realize I'm spinning of course uh, so I have to push super hard for a long time until it finally breaks and that is just woof, on the shoulder okay pretty sure I got all the rivets in this top piece here so I'm gonna try to take it out right now it's being held up with Spray foam, because I know there's spray foam in the ceiling. Let's see how this goes. Oh! Found one rivet. Oh, another rivet. This little bugger's gonna be hard to spot. Tell everybody. So I missed a total of three rivets. The last one just broke off. Now I'm just gonna zip through this and get all the walls off. Pretty as, much as simple as that. Forgot to hit record. Babe! Come here, I need your help. You missed a couple rivets here, babe. Yep. Tell you what, if it isn't silicone, it's spray foam. That stuff is also very annoying. Leave all your troubles, take back control. We ain't got time for that today. That is a lot of rivets. Ladies and gentlemen, I just un I just drilled out hundreds of rivets. I don't even know, but it was a lot. A lot of work to uh, take out of the walls. It took me all day. I got here at, okay, not all day, but I got started around noon. It is now 7.30 or so. Uh, about to take the end cap off. Whoa. Tripping over stuff. This is a, quite a process, but we're getting there. That's the last end cap for the interior skins that we got to get off. I'm gonna get Lacey out here to help me and uh, 
That'll be it. Then the last thing we gotta do is um, take out all the insulation and throw that crap away because so we're not gonna be using that again. No. Guys, we did it. We got all the walls off, all the skins off. Now, it's gonna finish up getting the rest of this insulation out so we don't have to worry about getting more insulation all over us tomorrow. We can take a shower and call it good. I think tomorrow we're gonna start, I'm gonna, well, we'll see, but I think I'm gonna cut the sub floor out. My nose just started bleeding. Really? Okay, babe. Uh, I think it's time to call it a night. I just don't want to get insulation on me again. Well, you're going to. Alright, this is taking longer than we thought. My nose just started bleeding for some reason. Shh. Stop. No! Stop. I don't want to pay overtime. <laughs> It's getting too dark. What time is it? 8.30. Almost got all the insulation out. There's a lot more uh, spray foam in here that I thought. I'm not sure if that's factory. I don't think it is. But uh, anyway, pain in the butt to remove, but we'll get it out tomorrow. Five thousand. It's over five thousand. Now that it's light out, take a look at what we got here. Looking in the back, we definitely see signs of repairs being done. And which makes sense because, you know, this was the back. These are the seams that were just covered in silicone or epoxy or whatever that was. Um, we had some damage on the edge of the metal that was like bent and um, I was just trying to figure out like what the heck went on. As far as I can tell, this whole back end cap, these uh, top three pieces of aluminum were replaced and the reason I can tell is because there's they're all held in with uh, Olympic rivets which from the factory Airstream uses buck rivets and th these are all Olympic rivets all up until just for those three pieces up until this beam and you can see there's some even some uh, separation there on that rib from the panel which is not good I can almost fit my finger in there. Yeah, I mean this, you can see this panel is all bent out of shape. Um, they didn't even make it into the original holes of this panel, they drilled new ones. So, oh, I'm right. Uh, so that's, that's a major bummer uh, to find that out, but Hey, now that we're inside, we're able to see exactly what was going on. You know, it was kind of a mystery up until now. Right now, I don't know what to make of it. I'm not really sure what I need to do or what needs to be done from here. Because it's not like it's from the outside. It doesn't look, it doesn't look like you'd need much repairs done. At the very least, what I would do is seal the heck out of it from the inside not on the outside. But I kind of want to straighten out some of those panels on the outside. I thought about doing a patch on here for some of those pieces, you know, get a new piece on there, but I don't know. I'll have to do some research and figure that out. If anyone has, has done any of that, uh, let me know what we can do. But yeah, for now, I'll keep checking along. I mean, the big thing, <laughs> the other major thing for me is just what condition our chassis in, our frame, uh, underneath the shell. You know, hopefully there isn't any really bad spots because, yeah, that would be, that would be a major bummer. What I did not want to do, and the reason I bought this trailer is because I, you know, I thought it was in good condition. It looked like it was in good condition from the outside. And it is, I mean, relatively speaking. But there's definitely more water damage than you could tell without taking it apart. Yeah. A little, a little bummed right now, but it's okay. We'll figure it out. We're gonna get this girl up and running. She just needs a little, little uh, medicine. Anyway, we're gonna continue on with our airstream renovation. 
If you want to see more of our videos, look out for the next video where we remove the subfloor. Make sure to subscribe and hit that bell so you get a notification when that video goes live so you can see what condition this frame is in. Let me know what you think. Is it going to be good? Is it going to, is it going to be bad news? Is it going to be good news? I don't know. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Make your prediction on what the frame is going to be like. See you next time.